Thank you for joining us, Friendship Christian Church, Friendship Ministries YouTube channel. Today we're in John chapter 1, verse 1, and also John chapter 16, verses 12 through 15. What we're going to talk about is the Trinity. The title of the sermon is, You Are Three, You Are One. This happens to be Trinity Sunday, and there are several questions about the Trinity, and it is a difficult concept to understand. So hopefully this sermon will help clarify that a little bit. After the sermon, we will end with prayer, and then we'll go into the Lord's Supper. So we'll be taking of the bread and the cup. Uh, I urge you to participate in that, and if you don't have... Uh, fruit of the vine, if you don't have unleavened bread, that is entirely okay. Just have something to eat, something to drink. God will take care of the rest of it. Before we get into our message, let us have a word of prayer. Fathers, you search our hearts and our minds. We just pray that you meet all those needs that are listed there. And Father, we pray for your hand on our prayer list. Do you give peace, comfort, and healing to where it's needed? And Father, we just also ask that you be with those that are still trapped in Afghanistan, those that are still under fire in Ukraine, those that are first responders, health care workers, those in the mission field, and those serving this nation, that you put a hedge of protection around them, keep them free from harm, from evil, and disease. And Father, we just pray that you be with Friendship Christian Church, that you allow it to shine with the light of the truth of Jesus Christ in Frankfort, Kentucky. Father, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. You are three, you are one. In 1804, Thomas Jefferson had already drafted the Declaration of Independence. He had already built Monticello, and he was nearly halfway through his presidency. But in that year, 1804, he took another undertaking, something very big, something very dramatic. What he did is he took a look at the Bible as it was, and he wanted to revise it. Now, he didn't want to put anything new in, but he wanted to take out those things that were difficult, stuff that didn't make sense, inconsistencies, implausible stories, and most of all, the confusing stuff about God being Father, Son, and Holy Spirit all in one. So he started a new religion, the Unitarian Church, with his revised Bible. For Jefferson, uh, he was the, uh, probably one of the most intellectual presidents, and he was president of the United States and also president of the American Philosophical Society. The Trinity, to him, just did not make sense. And for others, many of us who believe in the Trinity or want to believe in the Trinity, it can be a difficult thing to understand. Uh, God is God in three persons all at the same time. And that uh, we call it a triune God. We call it the Trinity. Uh, many Christians just don't want to grapple with it. Uh, it. It just becomes too confusing. It clouds their thinking, and they just want to let it be. But we can't. We can't just let it be because it's in God's Word. God wants us to know it. It's in God's Word. And it's given to us in John 1.1. 1, 1. Let's take a look. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning, John wrote, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word 
is, uh, and the word was God. So many people go, after they read John 1.1, 1, 1, they read it two or three times, they go, wait, what? What do you mean the word was with God and the word was God? Which is it? Which is it? it? It's quite a doozy of an introduction to a difficult book. But John goes on to tell us that this very same word of God, the one who is both distinct from God and who is God, took flesh as a tiny baby. A helpless baby in the middle of nowhere Israel. And God, the Son, was a loving friend to Mary, Martha, Lazarus, that the Word of God Himself, the Word of God Himself, died on the cross and destroyed death, destroyed death. And if that isn't complicated enough, we also have to wrestle with John's Gospel, his book, in which Jesus speaks of the Holy Spirit. And that brings us to John chapter 16. Verses 12 to 15. Uh, Jesus is trying to explain the Trinity. So let's, let's take a look. Uh, I have, these are Jesus' words. If you have the letter, letter edition, they're all in red. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now hear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me, because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said, the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. And that means there's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, a triune God, all God in all three. So you are three and you are one. It's the way we can describe the, Ho the Holy Trinity. So uh, this is a life-breathing God, an active love of God, and yet Jesus doesn't call the Spirit it. He calls the Spirit He. He. He, the Spirit of truth. This is the same Spirit of God whom was hovering over the waters at the time of creation in the book of Genesis. Transforming judges, transforming prophets, writing the Old Testament, the spirit who Paul tells us can be grieved by our actions, who speaks in the heart of faithful people, teaching us to pray and coming alongside of us as an advocate and a guide. So we have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all in one but engaging in us in three different ways. So what do we make of this? Uh, what do we make of the Father, the source of all that is spoken of, not as a theory about why there is something instead of nothing, but as a person who loves each of us infinitely, infinitely, who grieves with us over our smallest worries, our smallest transgressions. He knows the number of every hair on our head. What do we make of the Word of God, who is not an inspiring message or an important set of instructions, but the Word of God is a person who gives himself to us on the cross and resurrected gave his life for us, 
What do we make of the Holy Spirit, who is not the Star Wars force or a form uh, a, a was a warm fuzzy thing, but a person who takes up his abode in our hearts, who offers to make our lives living signs of the goodness and love of God. We are sometimes tempted to think of the Holy Trinity as a piece of technical theology or the misguided math of a primitive age. But in fact, the belief in one God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is the living heart of the Bible, just as we saw in John 1.1 1, 1 and in John 16.12-15. through 15. God's Word spoke. God's Word spoke to make it plain to us. The Bible is revealing God as three in one. And what impact does faith in the Trinity have on our lives? We often confuse knowing and knowing. If I say to you, uh, do you know President Biden? And you would go, well, of course. And I'll tell you, well, uh, give him a call and let him know that I'm not going to be there for supper tonight. <laughs> Sounds really off, doesn't it? Of course, I'm not invited to supper tonight. Of course, this person I'm talking to, who says he knows Joe Biden, is not going to be able to call and talk to Joe. He knows Joe Biden as president, but he doesn't know Joe Biden personally as a friend. So you can know, but not know. And so we can do the same thing with the Holy Spirit. We sometimes imagine that the doctrine of the Trinity is useful for knowing God. But do we know God? It's necessary to know God. You and God should be on intimate terms. You should be the best of friends. You should be able to call God at three in the morning and he will answer. So we must know God, not just about God. And the starting place of truly knowing him is to believe in the abstract, the hypotheses, the math problems. We must rely on faith to know God is to approach God in faith, in faith. So we must have faith that he is one and he is three, and he will answer our call at 3 a.m. We're on a first name basis. We have a real friendship with God. And by faith, we, we accept he is God the Father. He is God the Son. He is God the Spirit. To know and love Jesus is to fully know and love God and to fully know and love the Holy Spirit because Jesus is God in the flesh. He is the walking, breathing Word. The red letter edition, the Bible, His Word recorded and living. It's God's Word. Jesus speaking is God's Word. And it tells us. It tells us what we need to know. So to worship the fathers, to know where we stand, and to believe in faith that he will answer our call. That as the Holy Spirit and his Jesus 
he lives in us. And as the Holy Spirit, he guides us. As Jesus, he died for us. As God, he answers our call. That's the Trinity at work. Uh, the Eastern Orthodox Bishop Callistos Ware tells an old Eastern European story about a bishop of a large diocese who decided to visit every single one of his parishes. After spending years on horseback, he thought he had seen them all, but then he saw this tiny chapel on a remote island in the sea. Faithful to his mission, he chartered a boat and set out for that island to visit that chapel. Upon landing, he saw three hermits living there, and they were worshiping in that chapel. They were Christians. They were devout. And tell me, said the bishop, how do you pray? And they, they replied, oh, we simply stand holding hands like this, and the three old men clasped hands together and said, You are three. We are three. Have mercy on us. What? said the bishop. No, 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 no. This will never do. You don't know the Lord's Prayer? No, said the hermits. Please teach us, O holy man of God. So the bishop spent all afternoon teaching them the Lord's Prayer. And when he felt like they had finally gotten it, he said his goodbyes, he returned to the boat and headed back out to sea. Something happened on the way. He grew dark, it grew dark, and he uh, mused on the deck of his boat, looking out over the sea. From far away, he began to see tiny point of light from a lantern coming from the island. As it drew nearer, the light grew brighter and brighter until he could see that it was the three that were on that island at the chapel. They were holding hands and running swiftly on top of the water. Beards flying in the wind, faces radiant with the light of Christ. Oh, holy man of God, oh, holy man of God, they were shouting. We forgot the prayer. Can you teach us again? And the bishop smiled and said, I think that your prayer is doing just fine. There is no formula. There is no math problem. God is a trinity. You can call on God anytime. Jesus died for your sins. He's prepared a place for you in heaven. The Holy Spirit is guiding you through the Word, the Bible, the Word of God, Jesus. And by having faith, by reading the Bible, by studying the Word, by praying, by having communication with God as a best friend, you're going to do just fine. But if you don't know, if you don't know Jesus, then you need to come to know him, not, not, not know about him, not know what he did. Know him. Have a relationship with him. If you need help with that, you can call me, 502-220-1285. Let us close with the word of prayer, and then we'll go into the Lord's Supper. Father, we just want to thank you. Thank you for being in your word. Thank you for the Trinity that we can see how you operate in our life, what you've done for us, what you're doing for us. And Father, we just pray that we can be your worthy servant each and every day. Father, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, thank you, and may you go in peace. But I do encourage you to stay. Thank you for joining us for the Lord's Supper. Jesus indeed died on the cross for your sins. He gave of his body and his blood. And before doing, he met with his apostles and he took bread and broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body. This is bread. This was broken. It was 
Jesus' broken body that was put on that cross to die for our sins, but to also put death to death. Let us, let us pray. Father, we pray that you take this element, that you transconfigure it to be the substance it should be, the body of Jesus Christ, the body of the innocent given for the guilty. Father, we ask your blessings on this bread in Jesus' name. Amen. And then here I have the cup. Now, Jesus resurrected. He was in a tomb for three days. And then he resurrected to, to show us that there is eternal life, to prove to us that there is eternal life. He put death to death. When we die as, as being believers in Christ, as being people who have given our life to Christ, living for him instead of for ourselves, when we die, we will. We will go to heaven because he's paid the price for our sins. He's prepared a place for us. He paid the price and paid our remission into heaven with his blood. Let us pray. Father, we pray that you take the contents of this cup, that you transconfigure it to be the substance it should be, the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood that washes away the sins, the blood that defeated death, the blood that gives us eternal life. Father, we ask your blessings on this cup in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, and may we all go in peace.